Hi and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. I've been dropping a few VS Code uh, coding related productivity videos recently. Uh, I've dropped the one one about uh, keyboard shortcuts. I have another one about basic snippets and how how using both of these will pretty much 10x your productivity in the sense that you will be coding lightning fast. Uh, and today I will elaborate a little bit deeper. We will go into advanced features of VS Code snippets. So stay tuned for the video. As always, if you like the video, uh, feel free to click the like button and feel free to use the comment section. Drop any comments, questions you have there. And any links I will show you will be found in the description section of the video. So let's go to the actual content. So what I showed you in the previous video was how to create basic snippets like this one. Uh, you have a kind of a macro or snippet and when you, when you accept it, as you get a lot of code generated rapidly. But I wanted to keep the video very fast, so I didn't really elaborate much more. So my snippet is pretty much a stupid copy-paste code, so I will just kind of drop this wall of text uh, into where I invoke it. So today we are going to go a bit deeper. So first topic uh, that I wanted to show to you is how to do tab stops and placeholders. And it's a little bit awkward to edit them here, so uh, I'm going to show another trick we did uh, in the previous video, and that is to use a snippet generator application link in the description section. But we can easily do REST templates uh, or any templates here and generate the VS Code snippet structure. So uh, today's tricks, uh, I will show you how to do a bit more tab stops and placeholders like so. So we have the earlier example, still it begins quite the same, but then I carry on words a little bit differently. So first of all, we can do these tab stops. Uh, we don't need to limit to just one. We can do as many as we like. And then there's a special tab stop that's going to end uh, everything. So I'm implying that uh, here I'm expecting a little bit of input. Here I'm expecting a bit of input and I will end here. So please fill in these and then we are done. And uh, another thing here you can see is the, is the um, default value we can set for the, for the tab stop. It's a placeholder. So uh, we can use the placeholder to give a hint on what kind of input we are expecting and perhaps even a default value that could be used there. So uh, combining all those, I copy the snippet code and then uh, let me show you how that works. Just a tiny change, but it's already a lot more fun already a lot more flexible for you. So let's try it. Rest, get, like so. So now what you can see here is uh, I have highlighted the parameter or variable slots or placeholder slots. And if I keep on pressing tab, I will just accept these and then I'm at the end and ready to use it. But if I go back a little bit, so if we do rest, get, like so, uh, I'm also able to edit these so I can uh, use another URL and still tap to the next variable. Let's say it's not the date time, it's just time, so I can fill it in and tap to the next one. So this is very kind of simple thing you can do for the snippets to make them even more flexible, even more fun for you. Okay, uh, tip number two for the snippets. Uh, what if you like to put some uh, choice choices there? So let me show you a little bit of code. If we go back to the designer and I will design a new snippet, uh, let's do this for any call and let's call this rest call. So uh, again, I have a, a tab stop here and again, I have a placeholder, but in this case, I'm, I'm having multiple placeholders. So there's a bit different syntax. I'm having a list of values and by the way, not including post or put because then I would have, uh, have to have data parameter here as well. So I probably want another snippet for that. But I have a um, kind of samples where I can choose from and uh, this is the syntax for that. So let's copy the snippet. Let's go to VS Code back here and I'm going to add this one as a new snippet like so. And then let's try this out. So what I want to do is uh, call this rest call, accept it. So I have a placeholder that I could edit. Yeah, sure. I'm not going to edit it. But uh, if I tab it, I, I accept it. I, I go onwards. You can see the selection list here. So get, delete, head, options, 
we could do a head call instead for the URL if I like. Okay, so that was my tip number two. And I still have uh, one remaining. Uh, that's kind of a, a combination. Well, I, I actually have two, but let's call the last one a bonus tip. So the next tip is going to be how to use variables because we have plenty built in variables. And before we go into example, I wanted to show you this uh, documentation for VS Code snippets. You can use this one and go a bit deeper as well. But the list of variables is here. And there's simple syntax, so you can either use dollar variable name or you can put dollar variable name and, and default as always. So either one is fine in case the variable isn't available. So we could do a lot of fun with these ones. Let's, uh, let's try one uh, just to show you what we could do with these. So I want to go to my snippet uh, generator. Let's call this one variables. Let's use a really bad name here. So I'm going to define a new uh, snippet and this new snippet is going to define a variable uh, based on the value where I have kind of default or placeholder text, but there's also possibility to use the selected text variable. So how does that work? Let's find out. If I go back here, I add my snippet, my snippets, uh, snippets file language specific python snippets the name of the snippet is variable so let's try to use that one and uh, i'm going to do something like hi ho world and i need to select it for this to make sense and now in this case i cannot easily uh, like start writing the snippet name so what i can do instead is Control shift p and insert snippet and we can call the variables snippet like so. And now you can see that it modified the line. It took my highlighted part and it, it wrapped it inside quotes and created a variable to point to that one. So you can probably find many uses. This works in a little bit different mode than your normal generate code. This is more like wrap a little bit of code around whatever I have here. So you could easily use this to uh, comment things, uncomment things, etc. However, we already have macros for those, so you don't need, really need to reinvent the wheel here. But I think uh, that might have been interesting. There is also more variables like block comment start, block comment end, because you cannot include comments um, in, in this kind of snippet body, but you can include a lot of variables. And there is also a possibility to do variable transforms if you are using file name and file name happens to have some characters you don't want to include then it's also possible to do something about that one. Okay, so for my last little bonus tip, uh, this is about uh, binding keyboard shortcuts to your snippets. Uh, and that will allow you to do a lot of fun things because you don't need to write any trigger kind of keyword. Instead, you can paint an area of code and then you can wrap things around it by just pressing the right shortcut. So again, th something that would make you very fast in some particular scenarios. Okay, so how do we do that? For this, we need to go to the key bindings file. Easiest way to find it is Control Shift P or Command Shift P, and then you find the key bindings file. Uh, open keyboard shortcuts. Here we go. And uh, from here, I want to go to the uh, JSON view. And uh, sorry, this one. So we need to go to the JSON view. And uh, I have kind of prepared one that I know to be working. This gets a little bit more tricky, but no worries. You can pause the video or you can read the, the uh, kind of official documentation. It has almost the same sample there. But what we can do, I have defined control because I'm using a Windows system. So control K and one, uh, it will trigger insert snippet command. And uh, it will be apply when editor text has focus. And as an extra argument, I'm putting the snippet as an inline code here. It's pretty much the same snippet I just showed you. So it's in place. It's now a key binding. It's immediately in effect. So if I uh, write a little bit text and I, I paint it, I select it, and then I press Ctrl, K and 1, and that will trigger my new brand snippet. 
So I don't need to go to the Control Shift P menu and uh, fish my snippet from there. Uh, sometimes if it's something you use a lot, it's much more efficient to just uh, have the keyboard shortcut memorized and you can be lightning fast. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I wanted to drill down a bit deeper, show you some advanced tricks. And this had to do with uh, parameterization of the snippets, as well as default values to kind of guide users to do those. And uh, I also showed you keyboard shortcuts and uh, built-in variables, how, how you can benefit. I just scratched the surface there. There's plenty of the variables. You can find many advanced uses for those as well. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you did and see you in the next one. Bye bye.